Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, Earth spot, and Earth flare points, Voyager's voyage, and more on stellar encounters with our own solar system. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com, finding a full disk of low-level movement and energy, but without any large ejections or large flashes from solar flares. Indeed, the solar wind is the bigger story. Now, the left side of this chart is those erroneous cosmic ray readings. We know because the satellite has had those problems since day one, and the world didn't end when the readings appeared. So, yeah. To the right is the coronal hole stream impact and the geomagnetic storm it produced on the KP charts. Wouldn't be too shocked to see a short reverberation today. Coming next to the Doppler gram, because we've got two titanic umbral cores present on the northeastern quadrant, these sunspots utterly dominate their local surface area and contain gamma-class magnetic fields, but without much in the way of delta development at the large cores. The central regions are where that would need to begin, and right now they are small and calm despite having both positive and negative in there. Stable for now. Let's quickly come to an incredible video of a curving feature in the wake of a sprite. Nobody on Earth knows what to call this, but I swear I see these all the time on our star in the wake of solar flares. Folks, sunspots constantly crackle with low-level flashes like lightning, and in bigger releases, send out major electromagnetic energy called a solar flare, often producing curved effects afterwards. Earth spot storms constantly flash with low-level lightning and can rock at high electromagnetic spectra when releasing an earth flare or sprite or jet lightning. Just an FYI. We did have one notable quake yesterday, but at 40 kilometers deep we are without major casualties and damage, eyeing the other side of the world with deep rumbles and atmospheric disturbances having the lithosphere surrounded. We'll come back to the atmosphere in a moment, but first we're watching the tracks of Voyager 1 and 2. The animation is made to show their paths through the solar system while highlighting their slingshots around Jupiter and Saturn. Those help them gain speed and further gain direction. Both Voyager craft have exited the termination shock and are heading towards the edge of the heliosphere and are already delivering interesting details about the interstellar plasma of our galaxy. Next, you'll remember we showed two papers detailing past and future close encounters of another star with our own. This animation is for the big approach 1.3 million years from now and how fast it will look going across the sky. Now, the ESO has also created the visualization of what it will look like from the approaching star system as it swings close to the sun and then heads on out. Let's come back now to the atmosphere where Harvey remnants rumble through Appalachia as another system is taking on Baja to the west. But the real story here is the Irma forecast. So we've got eight days of forecast time here from today, Friday, through next Saturday, the one after tomorrow. The European model shows it dancing up next to Florida by then, but the NASA model is different. In this model, they have a rapid track that moves much more quickly and makes its way up to directly pound Washington, D.C. at that time. I expect both models will undergo some changes in the coming days, but we will keep you informed about them each day until the storm arrives. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.